This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham and I've got Amy Tibbin with me. You're the outreach coordinator for the Best Ottoman Hospice. Thank you for coming all the way from Kemple today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's um, great to be here in person. Well, you seem to have brought the sunshine with you too. It's been a long time <laughs> since we've seen the sunshine here. So. I did order that up. Oh, yeah. thank you very much for doing that. It makes the drive a little bit easier too. It does. Eh? Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your position. We've talked a lot on Zoom, but this is the first time we've actually even met. Yeah. Uh, your position is outreach coordinator. What is that? Yeah, so my <coughs> goal is to work with different community organizations, community members, um, and just promote hospice to all the different communities within our catchment. Our catchment is quite large, um, but we actually serve folks in Merrickville. Um, we come all, almost up and just grab part of Smith Falls, right? Um, Kempville, of course, um, down to North Augusta, Spencerville. Um, and all areas in between. So um, my goal is to kind of just make sure that we're reaching out to all of those different communities and letting the people know that we're here to support them um, and uh, that we have all of this amazing programming um, and then also to work with other um, community organizations and stakeholders to offer joint programming and, and just support each other. And maybe <clears throat> can you tell them a little bit about what the Beth Donovan Hospice does? Yeah, um, a lot of people will know of the Beth Donovan Hospice, but I'm always surprised and people are always surprised at all of the different programs that we do offer. So um, we are a community hospice. We do not have residential beds, although that is something that we're still working on. Um, it is a goal of ours and there's lots of work being done behind the scenes on that. Um, but we um, support people in their homes. So we send out in-home visiting volunteers um, to be with those who are at end of life, um, to provide companionship and support and also provide respite for the caregiver so that they can run errands, um, take a rest, whatever it is that they need to do that day. Um, we also have a wonderful day hospice program where people, um, our clients at end of life, can come into our building on French Settlement Road for the day. We do it on Thursdays between 10 and 2. Um, and they spend the day with us. Um, they get a nice home-cooked meal. Maybe they enjoy some live music. We have uh, entertainers who volunteer their time to come in and play music. Um, they get companionship with uh, our volunteers as well as the other clients. Maybe they do a craft. They can spend time with our grief counselor. They can get a massage. Um, and we just, we kind of create programming for them. Um, and then we also have an equipment lending program, which is quite large um, and lots of people make use of so that they don't have to go out and buy a walker or a bath bench or a bed rail. Um, they can just borrow it from us and it's free of charge. Um, we also offer grief and bereavement, grief and bereavement supports. Um, so that could be individual counseling with our counselor, um, but it could also mean accessing one of our peer support groups or uh, one of our um, volunteers um, who are trained in grief and bereavement and they just provide companionship and support. And um, we also have a really wonderful resource library uh, that we don't talk enough about actually. Right. Um, and we have books um, on caregiving, um, grief and bereavement of course of all different types, um, end of life, all kinds of supports there yeah and you know if we can go back to your day hospice I mean it's such a wonderful wonderful prog uh, uh, program that you have twofold for sure uh, the people that are taking care of their loved ones they get some time to themselves they can you know just go home and breathe they can go run errands that sort of thing but when the person that they love comes to the hospice they are enjoying their day away so you can be guilt-free that you know that they're not doing nothing or, or they're just being, you know, taken care of and having coffee. My goodness, you, you've got entertainment. There's things go. They love their time at the day hospice. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, when I sit with the clients, I often will have lunch with them and they'll say, you know, they take really good care of us here, don't they? And I say, yes, they do. Yes, they <laughs> There's do. always a nice meal and it's just that time, just that companionship and being in a different place, right? You know, because so often they're isolated and they're stuck at home, especially in the winter. Um, and especially with COVID, that was tough for a lot of people who were at home and were sick and scared to go out, but they could come to us. You know, we had all of the protocols in place when we could be together. And when we weren't together, we were sending volunteers with deliveries and meals and we were phoning them and, and just making sure that they had those connections. And that's such an important part of what we do is just connecting with people. Um, sometimes, you know, when 
our loved ones are at end of life, we're not sure what to say or to do, but of course our hospice volunteers are really, um, they're highly trained volunteers and they know how to connect and they know how to support. And, um, and it's just good to be around other people who have a similar experience. Um, and so we provide all of that as well. And let's talk about the building that you're in too. Mm -hmm. It's just a beautiful, beautiful building. I mean, accessible all the way around the whole first level, the top level. Yeah. It's beautiful. There's so many different areas to be able to, to you know, and the library, my goodness, yeah. yes. Yeah, it's, it's a lovely space. We're at uh, 1107 French Settlement Road, just east of Kempville. We're sort of nestled in the country there. Mm -hmm. Kempville's not far away, but you, you kind of feel like you come to this natural place. We have a large yard. Um, with a woodland behind and in the woods we have a labyrinth where people can go down and just find a moment of peace and tranquility. We have a healing garden again that just creates a space for reflection um, and um, our building is warm and welcoming, um, it's accessible, um, people can come there and be comfortable. Um, and yeah, it's just, it is a lovely space. We're just, we're so happy there. Um, and we, we offer our volunteer training out of that space. We offer our grief counseling there, um, as well as our caregiver supports. So we do do a caregiver coffee. Um, I believe it's the last Tuesday of every month, but the information is on the website. So mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, you can go check there. Um, and uh, so we offer all kinds of programming out of that building, including um, some therapeutic art programming that we have going on. And uh, yeah, it's just a wonderful space. It's a very healing space. It is, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, because you cover such a big catchment area, you've opened up some satellite offices? Yeah, yeah. So it's really important that we reach out to all the different communities in our catchment. We really want to connect um, with with everyone um, and sometimes people think that we're just in Kempville and we're not and so um, we've opened up these satellite office hours which is actually an idea that I stole from another lovely local hospice <laughs> um, and uh, they were going out to the different libraries in their communities and setting up these hours and I thought that's a really great idea um, not only does it get us out into the community um, meeting people in the library can be, it's a public space where people are comfortable to go. Sometimes when you first need the services of hospice, you're not sure what to expect. And of course, we want people to know that they're welcome in our space at any time. But it's a little less intimidating maybe to go to the library. Um, it's a, just a little bit more approachable. So on the first Tuesday of every month, we're at the Merrickville Library from 1 till 3. And on the first Thursday of every month, we're in the Kempville Library from 2 till 4. And we hope to add other locations in the future, um, other touch points in the different communities where people can come and ask questions about our services and how they can access all of those supports. But also, um, you know, if they're interested in volunteering, we can talk about those opportunities or if they want to know how to donate or, you know, if they have a special skill that they want to contribute, um, we can have those conversations then. And the, the fact that you're in the library too, you've got a, a lot of people walking in and out just doing other things at the library and they think, oh, there's the hospice right there. The moment that they need it, it's like, I know where you are. Yeah, and that's the idea is just mm -hmm. to have a constant reminder yes. in the minds of our community members that we're there. You know, we are here. We're just, we're right here waiting for you when you need us. We'll be there. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Now, you have uh, put a goal on yourself last year, 30 for 30, because this is your 30th anniversary. Yeah, this yeah. 2022 was our 30th anniversary. And I just want to extend thanks to our community members and our partners and all of our volunteers and staff members and, and past staff members. It was a really wonderful year. People came out and they told their stories about what hospice means to them and they supported us. And we are just, I mean, we're never surprised by the support in this community, but we're always impressed. I just, it's so wonderful, this community that we live in. And uh, we wanted to raise $30,000 for 30 years of service. And we just got so close. We're so close. I want to say that <clears throat> we've succeeded. We've done it. Yes. Um, yeah. We hit, uh, we're sitting right around $28,000. Um, so I feel like, you know, that last little $2,000 might trickle in. And for people who want to support hospice, um, they can go to our website. There's a donate now button. They can mail in a check. They can stop by. They can give us a call. 
Um, whether it's ten dollars or two thousand, it all counts. So yeah, yes, you're so close. You've got twenty-eight thousand, and we're trying to get up to thirty. So I think you're going to do it. I, I think, think we're going to do, do it. it. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Now you've got some groups going on. You, you mentioned a couple of them while you were talking. Support and share groups meet the second Wednesday of every month from five thirty to seven. That's right. And these are really important groups. This is our um, <coughs> what was our bereavement coffee group, and um, right now the group that's meeting um, there was a focus on recent loss. Um, so this is a peer support group led by our trained bereavement volunteers and they facilitate a space for people to come in and share their grief stories um, and their coping strategies um, and, and f to support each other. So that's why the name is sort of shifted to support and share. Okay. <clears throat> and um, that group will finish up this month, I believe, and then in March um, the group will shift to those who are coping with a continued grief. So this is a longer term grief, um, you know, maybe the loss was a year or so ago. Um, and it's important to have these different focuses because everyone's grief journey is a little bit different um, and they may require different supports. Um, and it's nice to be around people who share a similar experience. Um, grief is varied and everyone's experience is different, but, but it is a shared experience. So there will be some similarities with the different groups. Um, and, you know, we, we used to talk about, you know, healing our grief and getting over our grief and, and um, that, that's, you know, not the way that we talk about it anymore. We talk about the loss or the void, the, um, the hole that's sort of left behind after a loss. And um, really what we want to do is provide supports to be able to um, help that person. We're, we're never going to close that that loss, that void, but what we can do is provide different supports um, to help people cope and, and live with their loss. And I mean, to have that kind of support is so important because some people, you know, if they haven't gone through it yet, they've got a mindset of, you know, oh, I'll, I'll be okay in a month sort of thing or, or a year, <clears throat> and you're not. Yeah. Some people aren't, and some take five years, ten years, and it's like to be able to meet with people and think, you know, I was fine for so long, and then all of a sudden, boom, Christmas or something reminded me to meet with other people. Grieving is different with everybody. Some people can get over it quicker, and some people, 10, 20 years later, it's still Yeah, and exactly. Heavy. It can ebb and flow, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, and so then that's why we try to provide different supports for everyone. So um, we have different focuses for the support and share groups. We also have guided journaling, therapeutic art. Um, I know last year we did a walking group, so that was great for people who you know, maybe were more active grievers and being outside can help as well. Um, so yeah, they can go to our website and check out our support, our network of support, um, and they can find the right fit for them. And perhaps, you know, maybe it's, it's not group oriented, maybe it's individual counseling right. that they would prefer and we offer that as well. Absolutely, absolutely. But it's, it's so nice to talk to somebody else because you, you try and get help yourself from somebody who's teaching it. But when you meet somebody who's going through it, yeah. it's a whole different experience. Too. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Now you've got another one, suicide loss support group. Yeah, and this one's so important. Mm -hmm. um, suicide loss tends to remain in the shadows of our society. People don't want to talk about it for various reasons. But it is such a, it's a different burden that, that people sort of carry. It's a lot to carry on your own. Um, and so uh, we are offering a suicide loss support group at the North Granville Public Library. Um, and this one is not peer supported. This one, it's a, it's a group setting, but it will be facilitated by our grief counselor and she will provide um, coping strategies um, and, and it, she will facilitate a space where people can come together and talk about the complexities of their grief. 